Are you tired of capitalism? Are you fed up with ice? Well, enough shit posting. It's time to do something. Let's tear down capitalism once and for all. I hold you accountable. And in the following video series, I assume you're alone in your task. The first thing you'll need to realize is that if you're all alone in tearing down your local capitalism, you have a huge task in front of you. And long term, this is going to require more time than two hours after work. Don't worry though, I've already talked about this topic and you'll just have to work with what you got anyway. <laughs> the first things you'll need to think about are getting people and making a plan. Please note that this four part video series is targeted mainly at anarchists, but don't give it up just yet. The vast majority of the ideas in it are useful for any other organizer. The plan. The first thing you'll need to do is to sit down with a piece of paper and plan. This is something that you'll need to take extremely seriously. Realize this, right now you're the absolute dictator of this non-existing group and in practice you will continue to be so for a surprising amount of time. The people you get on board are likely to not take much initiative at first and the group will mostly go the way you want it to without you needing to argue a lot unless you're really lucky with your team. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your group is horizontal or not, you'll have to take the lead for now. Making everyone participate at a more equal level is something I will talk about in another video. What should your plan consist of? Well, in no particular order. Long-term strategy and short-term tactics. What are you people going to be doing? Does your area require you to focus on bashing the fash, or are you keener on giving people free food? This topic requires its own video, by the way, so stay tuned. <laughs> How specific is your group going to be? This is largely going to depend on any long-term goals that you have. If you're aiming to create an affinity group doing something specific, like resisting a stupid policy, then it might make sense to allow almost everyone in. If your long-term goal is to create a specific anarchist organization with a common strategy and ideology, which I strongly encourage, more on that later too, then you probably want to be far more restrictive on who you allow in. How are you going to organize? Is your group going to be a specific group that allows an informal style of organization? Or do you aspire to become an organization that is active in a larger area? If so, you might want to sketch a constitution for a formal organization. <laughs> More on that in a video I'll make very soon. Also, if this is your level of ambition, I encourage you to not necessarily feel limited by your national borders. For us crazy revolutionaries, that might not necessarily make sense. How are you going to recruit? Don't just settle with the first place that comes to mind. There are many reasons to be tactical here. If you work at a construction site, odds are that your workplace is dominated by men. So if you recruit in your workplace, then your group is going to be dominated by men. This is not just a thing to keep in mind. This should be at the top of your priority list. Acquiring gender and race balance in the organization is never going to be easier than it is now. One person might flip the gender and race balance to a 50-50. Do not neglect this, especially if you're a man. When your group consists of 10 white men, which is likely if you neglect this, you must recruit 10 women to acquire a 50-50 balance. Oh, now that we're talking about recruitment. Posters, stickers, graffiti, a guide. Wheat pasted posters are in my experience the best way to clearly state that this area is an area with anarchist presence, so I would for sure get experience with this fast. Also, it is both really easy and really cheap to both make the wheat paste and a typical cliche red and black poster in GIMP. I'm not going to help you with designing the poster, there's lots of guides anyway, 
but I will put a wee paste recipe here because it's so damn easy. All you need is 4 cups of water and 1 cup of wheat flour and 2 tablespoons of sugar, which you prepare in the following way. Boil 3 cups of the water in a pot. Take the remaining cup of water and mix it with the cup of flour. Now, pour this lovely mixture in the boiling pot, turn off the heat, mix it around, put the sugar in it, mix it some more. If it's cold outside, which it unfortunately is here because I live in fucking Norway, you also want to add some salt. Why salt? I, I read it on a forum once and it's a habit now, okay? <laughs> Now that the paste is cold, just put it in something, drag along a brush and your posters, which should preferably be A3, take some paste on the brush, apply to the victim wall, apply the poster to the paste, and add more paste on top. The recipe is enough for around 10 A3 posters, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong and someone tries it, put it in the comments. Okay, sorry, I just can't help it but to tell you what to do on the poster. Here are my requirements. 1. Use a lot of colors. 2. Don't use too much text, please. 3. Put some form of contact information on it. Just make an email or a Facebook page or something like that. 4. Keep in mind what demographics will be attracted to the poster you put up. I like to hint towards that I love veganism because veganism is dominated by women. Stickers can be ordered online. The only sticker store I'm aware of is Disgusted Youth. I wouldn't put too much focus on stickers though, they only have a minor effect, and posters mainly do the same job, just better. Honestly, I have only touched spray paint once in my life, look this up somewhere else. Just be a little mindful about where you write anarchy is order, because often it does more harm than good. Not saying it's never cool though. Do all of this, and the local anarchists in your area will probably approach you. I got multiple contacts just by putting up posters. Brainwashing, a guide. For years I've told my friends to read The Conquest of Bread repeatedly. When that didn't work, I started telling them to read Anarchy by Erico Malatesta, because it's significantly shorter and more accessible in language. Newsflash, they didn't read that either. I'm not telling you to give that up completely. Like, I have worked with the attention span of other Zoomers, but on a general basis, I don't think this is a good way of getting people on board with the idea of tearing down the state. What should you do then? If it is safe enough for you to do so, I strongly encourage you to host open meetings and discuss stuff with people. In my experience, people are surprisingly open to attending these meetings. While the entire premise of this video is that there are not cool anarchist groups around, there might be some organizations that are fairly open to the ideas. Keep in mind demographics and then go for someone whose values are good in some way. Traditional targets like radical social democrats or democratic socialists are of course good targets, but don't underestimate people that are a little alternative in a non-leftist way like vegans, minimalists, and climate activists, etc. There is a significant overlap between us, since, you know, it's not the working class that funds climate denialism research, it tries to make us believe bacon is environmentally friendly, and of course, healthy. <laughs> Like, holy shit, look at this fucking study. It's so dumb. Bacon is better for the environment because uh, CO2 emissions per calorie <laughs> is higher in lettuce. Like, what do these people think vegans eat? Be mindful of demographics when it comes to topics as well. My experience is best with discussing something concrete. For a short period, I hosted open meetings regularly, and the meetings that was by far the most successful was the one about direct action. Essentially what we did was to hypothetically plan to occupy our school to force our politicians to not bid X. People seemed very open to the ideas after that meeting, and some of them actually read what I recommended afterwards. Also, remember that people won't become convinced in the room. Your goal is to plant seeds that can grow into them going crazy just like us. Try to remember when you became radicalized. It didn't happen in a night, did it? First someone exposed you to the idea that capitalism sucks. 
Then you read into that and you went, well, that makes sense. And then you wondered, uh, what can you do about it? And then your local equivalent to Bernie Sanders or Democratic Socialists of America started interesting you. And then you realized that the state wasn't exactly the working class best friend. And then it was done. Well, be patient. Just stay in touch with people, tactically. First you convince them that capitalism sucks, then you convince them that unions are awesome, and then you tell them that unions might actually take over the world. You can do it. If it's hard to get people to show up, experiment with topics. Everything from workshops about veganism to long historical lessons about anti-fascism can be used to get contacts. The topic you're thinking of probably works. Write down 30 or so questions and some points that you want to get across in the discussion on a piece of paper, invite someone, and it's probably going to go well. And if it doesn't, hey, now you got yourself some organizational experience. That will not hurt in the long run, will it? If you put posters, make a social media presence and host open meetings, I'm sure you'll get two or three contacts that want to work with you within a few months. Then, it's nice that you've prepared some strategy. Oh wait, that's the topic of the next video, isn't it? Social media. <laughs> Having a social media presence might not be the worst idea. You can for sure reach a lot of people this way. Personally, I have not used social media in this way before, but I can imagine that having a Facebook page, something like Your Place, Anarchist, and update that once in a while will at least make it easy for locally interested people to contact you. But just please don't pretend that you're a large organization when it's really only your Facebook page. That's cringy. I know one who does this. Oh, it's painful. <laughs> Safety. Be mindful of the fact that neo-Nazis exist, please. How much you'll need to do with regards to safety is going to vary a lot depending on where you live. Some places it might be necessary to go completely underground as anarchist activity might be illegal, other places it won't be necessary to do much at all. Since I'm one of the lucky ones that don't need to do much in this regard, combined with the fact that this varies so much between places, I won't talk about it now. But I'll mention one thing, infiltration is a very real thing, and a healthy level of skepticism can save you from some problems. Sometimes journalists are really just police informants, and if a person seems weird, they might be an infiltrating fascist. Of course, this is normally not the case, but I would meet people and talk with them to reduce the risks. Which brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today. Evaluating people. It's a good idea to sit down and decide what your requirements for working with people are. If you have an idea about this, it will be much easier to avoid people that will contribute mainly in a negative way. Otherwise, it becomes too easy to give people the benefit of the doubt, when there really shouldn't be any doubt. One way of doing this could be to make a form with criteria and have a conversation with the interested person that involves the topics. Just don't bring the form and take lots of notes unless you have a good reason to do so. That's uncomfortable? This may at first sound like a little much, but remember, some people can really cause problems. This could be due to strategic disagreements or it could be due to inactivity. It's not the worst thing to increase the threshold a little bit to become active, depending on what kind of activity you're interested in having. Often the quality of the members is much more important than the quantity. If you liked this video, it will help a lot if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.